Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lucor Automotive. Today is going to be another day with my 2003 Pontiac 5 GT. For those of you who are not familiar with this vehicle, uh, I did recently pick this up. It's kind of a cheap beater car, and it's going to be going with me on the 2500-2500 road trip, which by the time you see this, we will be getting ready to leave first thing Thursday morning. What is the 2500-2500? Well, easy. 2500 miles in $2,500 cars. Yeah. So... Essentially, this car I bought for a little less than two grand. I have fixed my VVTIL. Um, I have put new wheels and tires on it. But the next thing I need to do is stopping power. Uh, the stock brakes that are on this, it did sit for a long time, are pfft, horrible. Uh, brakes are dragging, making terrible noises. They do brake reasonably well, but given we're going to be headed all the way down to Bradenton, Florida to go to the Freedom Factory, and on the way there, we're going to do a whole lot of twisty roads down the Tail of the Dragon, the Blood Mountain Road down into Helen, Georgia, and a bunch of other places. Uh, I don't want to worry about my brakes. So, I went on the wonderful and always useful Rock Auto, and I found myself some brake components. Uh, we got ourselves an entire kit from Power Stop. Uh, these are my rear calipers, and they are red, because race car. Isn't that exciting? Um, I've got their extreme power stop street performance brake pads, uh, which are probably going to be loud, uh, but they're going to be good, and they're going to be able to handle what we're asking for them, and they do come with all new hardware. Um, I also did get some power stop lube right here, and to go with my new calipers and my new brake pads, I got new, ta-da! Slotted and cross-drilled brakes. So we've got new pads, new rotors, new calipers, all from PowerStop. Going on my Pontiac Vibe GT. It's going to really upgrade the braking power of this car, uh, especially because I'm probably going to be misbehaving a little bit in the mountain passes. Uh, anyway, time to do a brake job. Not the super probably most exciting thing, but it's necessary. What's that thing that Jeremy always says? Maintenance. So let's do some maintenance. In one of the last videos, you did see me do the wheel and tire upgrade on this car. So we are running a set of OZ Racing wheels. Uh, these were originally on a Subaru Forester that we had. That's kind of a project in limbo that's abandoned in the backyard. But I happen to be able to talk Rich into letting me steal them for my Pontiac 5 GT. And they are the proper offset. They are the proper bolt pattern. Life is good. Um, we've got ourselves a brand new set of Riken Raptor tires. And although they are a summer tire, they're at all season, but they're a summer aggressive tire. I gotta say, so far in the rain, the wet, the salt, the snow, the ice, the hail, everything we've had in the last week here in Ohio, they've been excellent. I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, balanced out really well. They, they, they are a fantastic tire so far. I'm super excited. And they're a 300 treadwear tire, so when we get down to those twisties in the mountains, it's gonna be good. Now, brakes are not totally horrible. Don't know if you could see that, but it kinda stuck there. A uh, little bit of grindy, grindy action. They don't spin real well. Yeah. Again, this car sat for quite a while before I drove it, so it is what it is. But we've got some stuck calipers. We've got some really unattractive brakes. Everything's covered in rust. It, no, that's not how this is going to work. New brakes it is. Um, I do have these uh, lug nuts are spline drive, so I need to bust these things off with a spline drive tool or key. Uh, and we can pull the wheels off, start taking our brakes apart, and uh, start hanging all of our brand new power stop super sexy brakes. This is not technically a big brake kit. Uh, they are the factory size brakes. Um, there is a big brake kit that's available for this car that nobody really ever uses, uh, which would be like a TRD upgrade for a Celica GTS, which is essentially the same car. Um, but everything I've read, nobody really ever needs it. Nobody ever really uses it. And for the amount of money I would spend to do that upgrade, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, and I, hey, look, I like spending money as much as the next guy. But I don't need to spend money where I don't need to spend money. Know what I mean? So, let's get these wheels off here. Let's get moving. Let's 
Somebody did ask me also in the comments section of one of my videos about how many threads of engagement I got on this with these new lug nuts and these new wheels. Remind me and I'll figure that out. Oh. You can tell they're still dragging. Man, we're gonna free up some horsepower too. Brake upgrade for horsepower. How good is that? If you've watched me do anything before where I'm doing the wrenching, you're familiar with the fact that I like to use hand tools, not power tools. Well, today I have a lot of work to get done and not a lot of time to do it, so I'm using Rich's power tools. Thanks, Rich. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Big ol' single piston. Put those out of the way there. Now these pads look. Actually, pads are pretty good. Quite a bit of pad life left on there. That's the outside pad. Inside pad, similar wear. Not terrible. Hey, these do come with new brackets. All right. And they are powder coated. How about them apples? Had me worried there for a minute that I was gonna have to mount my beautiful new calipers on these ugly old, oh, how about that? Powder coated red. Because race car vibe race car. Alright, this should be this side. I will also be flushing these things out. Uh, prime opportunity to replace the brake fluid that's in here. Because who knows how long it's been since this fluid's been replaced, if ever. Um, that is one of the tricks when you're buying an old, older car. Yeah, I know you classic car guys, this is not an old car, but older car, also one with questionable maintenance history, is just go ahead and replace everything you touch because you really never know. Um, and especially on vehicles like this where everything's pretty well available, um, why not just replace it and be done with it, man? Just get it done. All right, get my caliper bracket off. Okay then, get the bar out. All right. Just needs a proper amount of leverage. He's busy. Lemon squeezy. Slides did okay. Comes with all new pad hardware and crush washers for the brick holes. Crush washers. Oh, where's this little guy go? Hardware looks like it's identical. One thing that can be kind of a pain with these powder coated calipers is the tolerances because of the powder coating can cause some problems getting these things in here. So occasionally you will have to grind off a bit of the, the powder coating. 
All right, uh, hardware's in, let's grab our pads. Huh. These come with hardware too. I don't need two sets of hardware, but they don't know that I'm buying calipers. Hey, and it comes with lube also. Excellent. There we go, Power Stop Extreme. Carbon fiber ceramic pads. Uh, now something to be cognizant of, pay attention to, be aware of, follow the instructions about, is bedding in your brake pads. Um, as somebody who is not always he who follows the instructions, I will readily admit the fact that I have screwed this up in the past, um, and especially given these are a pretty aggressive brake pad, um, you need to make sure you bed these in correctly. So, uh, go out, do five pretty aggressive stops from like 40, 50 miles an hour down to 10. You want to really get in it, push those brake pads into those new rotors. Um, then you also want to do five kind of moderate ones. So 35 to, you know, five, 35 to 10, but not nearly as, um, and then you got to drive it around, let it cool down a little bit. Um, you know, let, try to stay off the brakes, let the brakes cool down, get those surfaces made it up so that the way they needed to be, um, and get that initial bite in on the rotor between the rotor and the pad. Um, and then you're golden. But if you don't do that, you could end up with things not wearing correctly and things not mating up correctly. You could end up with some pad chatter issues. You can end up with warped rotors. You can end up with all kinds of other things. You don't want to do that, given you just did a new brake job. So make sure you bed your brakes in correctly. Take it from me who's done that wrong. Several times. So let's make sure passenger front side, correct rotor. Hey, hey, look at that. Correct thing. Anybody else ever gotten the wrong parts when ordering things? Not necessarily from Rock Auto, but from, you know, anywhere. And you get to that point where you've disassembled the whole car, realize that your parts are wrong and you can't put the car back together. Am I the only one? No? Didn't think so. All right, gonna have to beat this pack, this rotor off of here because it's not coming off. Incredibly useful tool to have in the toolbox. The BFH. Wow. There we go. Uh, looking at the life of the rotor, I mean, it's really, if this thing hadn't have been parked and horrible, these rotors are really not that bad. They're probably turnable. Um, if I were a penny pinching kind of guy and I was trying to just do a, a basic cheap brake job, I probably would. Um, in our case, because we're going to be going to the upgraded rotors, not happening. Dust shields leave a thing or two to be desired. Yeah, even the mating surface on the front of the hub is actually really not bad. I'm guessing somebody probably did a brake job on this thing slightly before it was parked. All right, front, passenger, side. Yes, this is the front, passenger, side. Oh, they look better already. These guys in here. Pull the pads up. Okay. Remember when I said that there's sometimes an issue with being able to get these things fitting correctly after you've had powder coating done? Hold, please. Whew. Okay, so just like two seconds later, I finally got it in there. Pads loaded up. Use some of our Power Stop lube. Don't want any loud breaky breaky pads. 
Might have gotten a little aggressive on that. Might have gotten a little aggressive. A little aggressive. I'll run one of these nuts down just to hold the rotor in place so I don't end up with a rotor flopping all over the place on me. Good to know that nut actually goes way down. Easy peasy. Oh, that's gonna look real nice. So what do you think? Red power stop calipers, slotted cross drilled rotors with a gold wheel in the front. Yeah, I think it's gonna look real nice. Definitely better than this old rusty junk. I'm gonna leave the old caliper hanging. Uh, that way I'm not just constantly dripping the system uh, and I'll bleed it all out in one big shot. But we we'll move on to the other side. If I run into any other complications, I'll show you. Otherwise, it's do the same thing on the other side. You know, while I'm over here, let's start a fight about something. This one is labeled front driver's side. See? Right there, front driver's side. So the veins are basically vertical. They don't, they don't matter. But the cuts angle outward, right? And the drill marks angle outward. So the rotor's going to turn this way. Hard to show you. The rotor's going to turn that way, right? So everything's going to be going that way. I have seen many a conversation about having it the other way, having the cuts going towards the forward rotation. Which is the correct way? What way do you do this if it doesn't have it labeled there and tell you where it's supposed to go? Would you do it this way? Or would you do it the other way? I always do mine this way, but I'm not saying I'm right. What do you think? Let me know. Let's start a fight. Man, that dust shield is destroyed. So both sides are good on the front. We're back in business. Again, the calipers I've still left hanging there. Uh, I'll bleed all that system out here just shortly. I want to move to the back, get those done. Uh, we'll see how bad those ones are. Those were the ones that were making the most noise. So we'll see exactly how badly worn those guys are. It's crazy, these Chinese lug nuts that have been on here for a week are already rusting. <laughs> uh, man, they don't like make them like they used to, do they? Uh. The rear brakes on these cars are quite small. That, that's it. Little tiny piston. Little bit one. So a little single piston guy in the back, uh, no caliper, pretty simple. Uh, you just got your two slide bolts that mount on there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And it's got uh, slide pins that secure the brake pad in here. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, however, there is also a parking brake back here, which could be a nightmare. And uh, let's make sure we don't lose our pins. All right, let's get this thing off of here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so these are 14s, which is different. So I'm gonna go up underneath this thing, get this thing up in the air, and we'll get them from the inside because I can't use a deep well where it goes into the coil, and then I can't wrench it. I definitely can't hit it with a power tool. So up we go.
loose. So, top bolt comes out here. Bottom bolt down here. Uh, uh, this slide out. Uh. Yeah, those are a little grimy. We'll clean those up. Those are a little gross. So, yeah, at this point in time, caliper comes off. Isn't that easy? 14 mil, 14 mil, both use a shallow. Use a breaker bar to break them loose or whatever, depending on how tight they are. Mine I made it a breaker bar with, but otherwise, no big deal. No big deal. Really not that bad, guys. Really not that bad. Um, there is born on dates. Uh, there are born on dates on the front pins or on the front brake pads. Uh, let's say 2017. So who knows as far as that goes? Um, you know, if that was if they were done in 2017, um, or if those pads are just from 2017. Now here's another question I'll ask you guys. As far as these. Uh, keeper pins. This has little keeper pins as well as these little guys. And there are two sets per caliper. Uh, looks like whoever was in here last just put these keeper pins through these and didn't do anything else. So, do you trust the last person that was in here and just do it the same way they did? Or do you do it how you think is the correct way? What do you think? Well, rear rotors have got a bit of a ridge to them. Got a bit of a ridge to it. There is parking brake shoe left. Kind of surprised. Thought that was going to be destroyed. Well, that's good news. Right, Got to knock these pins out, and they're going to go from inside out. All right. So I'm going to have to knock them from this way, that way. So, need a little hammer and a punch. Punch. Small hammer. Maybe punch and bigger hammer? Those are definitely heavily corroded into there. Punch. Bigger hammer. We'll get back to you guys in a minute. I've got them loose. They're at least driven out of a hole. And I just gotta drive them the rest of the way out, which is not very interesting and probably gonna require a little bit of medieval stuff. So we'll get back to you. Be right back. Okay, pins are off. This one is, uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but pretty badly corroded. Um, whatever, we don't need them again. They're, they're gone. Um, we're replacing those with brand new pins. These guys here, um, went ahead and cleaned up my bolts also while you were off camera. So we're ready to go back together. Um, this caliper does not have a any other mounting hardware. There's no bracket or anything. So uh, the only thing we have left to do is break this line loose. Obviously, as soon as we break the line loose, then we're going to start, you know, losing brake fluid. Um, I do have new copper crush washers that come with all this. So you got one for the inside, then the hose. One for the outside, uh, and then I do also have new lock washers for the uh, slide bolt. So, zip that line off, pull the caliper out, put the, transfer the line over onto the new caliper, and then load the pads into it. Yeah, piece of cake. 
Why did I say that? Okay, here we go. Oh, that's interesting. There's no copper crush washers on that. That's nice. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, as I mentioned before, as far as the um, powder coating goes, a lot of times you're going to have an imperfect seal here where there's either casting flash or something else. In this case, it's a little bit of uh, the powder coating. Let's see if I can get that off real quick. And we're going to use a copper crush washer and crush that against this to give me a better seal. Bolt. Bolts and hoses. Uh, pads on the back, back here by the way. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that or not. But this one's actually got a ridge where it was wearing a little bit weird, which is not super surprising given how much these pads chattered, seem like they chattered about. But pad life left, so far there's quite a bit left. Um, I haven't seen anything that's really said you're in dire straits when it comes to your brake pads. Again, same aggressive brake pad we used in the front, we're using in the rear. Carbon fiber ceramic. Extreme! Which may end up making this thing start sounded like a race car whenever I come up to a stop sign, but it is what it is. I don't know, this comes with a whole different set of wires. Ooh, I'm guessing it's just different types. Huh. There's no screech tab on the old set of pads. Interesting. Well, there is on this one. Again, these are directional. They have an area that they're told to be installed in. This one is rear driver's side. Ta-da! And these are non-vented disc. These are solid disc. As you could tell from the tiny little brake pads, they do not do a lot of braking with the, bra the back of this car. Mostly front braking. In. Goodness me. Okay, let's lube our slides up. Stick our pins in. 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 Ten in. Remove the excess schmutz. Put our retaining clip in. There we go. Ta da! Woo doggy! There you go. Get my hose reattached. Again, I am going to use a copper crush washer for this on the inside. This is a shouldered bolt on the outside, so I don't think I need one there. Uh, and there wasn't one to begin with. But I am going to use one 
on the inside just because I can and because it helps the sealing surface. And I learned a trick from somebody on YouTube the other day that once you got that up there, you, the idea is to crush that crush washer to, perp, to seal that crush gasket there, is to hit it one time, just a little bit, with a hammer, and then give it a little bit more. Hmm. Never done that before? We'll see how it works. All right, so that guy is tight. We have brake completed on this side. Let's get on over the other side, finish that side off. And then we're done. Haha, <laughs> now then we get to bleed the brakes all by ourselves. Again, uh, it's the other side. Do the same thing. Unless I run into something exciting, I'll be done before you see me. Power stop caliper, upper bolt, no problem. Lower bolt. We have a problem. It will not clear that bushing all the way through. Which is a problem because it will not slide correctly. So, I don't know if we've got a machining error. Because if I feed it back in from this side, it does the same thing. It gets halfway in and stops. This way, halfway in and stops. So maybe we've got a burr inside there. Yep, we've got a burr inside there. So, <clears throat> you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Time to do some stuff. Back in a minute. Double checking myself here. I think that there's already a crush washer on here. If there's not, there's gonna be here momentarily. Because this is supposed to have a crush washer on it. Whether or not the last jack leg did it or not, I don't know. But I'm doing it the right way. So, the reason I noticed this was the other side actually has a bridged uh, crush washer. So it's both the inner side and the outer side. They go on either side of the hose together. You see that? Um, and this one actually has the same thing. It's just so far crushed down that I can't see it because it's, I mean, it's tiny. So I need to pull this washer off and then pull those off and then put it back together. Okay. <laughs> Crush washer off. Here are the little bridged washers. Now whether or not that would have made any difference, whether or not it would have caused me to have a brake leak, I don't know. But better safe than sorry. We're not gonna We're not gonna play with it. We're not gonna worry about it. We're going to put this together the right way with two crush washers and make this not leak. Do it right, do it once. Now we're golden. Calipers, pads, rotors on all four corners. Brake hoses are all on. Copper washers are all on, on all four corners. Uh, everything's good to go, so time to put a bunch of brake fluid in it, start draining this thing. Bleed all this stuff through the system. I want to get all brand new fluid in this guy. Um, do I need to? Maybe, maybe not. Depends on what the, what the you know, maintenance has been. The fluid that I saw coming out of the calipers was definitely more black than what I would like to see. So. We're going to cycle all that stuff through, which is not a lot of fun when you're the only guy here, but you got to do what you got to do. So, uh, brake bleeding time. Then we can go bed the brakes, and then we're done. Whew. After hours work is lots of fun, but you got to do what you got to do. Cause I can't do this during the day. Well, I have gravity bled all four corners, and we've got a nice clean fluid coming out. Uh, I went ahead and replaced everything that's in the system with DOT4. 
because um, this fluid that was in here was it needed to be replaced. And DOT4 is a higher performance braking fluid in case I do some high performance braking with this car. Um, at this point in time, the only thing really left to do is clean off our braking surfaces, put our wheels on, torque everything to spec, and uh, go for a drive. Oh, and uh, put all my tools away. So let me put all my tools away, get my wheels and tires back on, uh, torque everything down, and then uh, we'll see if I did a thing. Hopefully I did a thing. It would be a really sketchy drive home if I didn't, because I'm the only one here. All right, we are all torqued down. Uh, nothing left to do but to do it. Get on the road and see how she does. Now, granted, just FYI, it is 28 degrees outside and a little icy, so the aggressive braking may not be quite as aggressive as I normally would, but a little, uh, little good of a give the old college track. I gotta say, even if they don't do a great job for braking, and they do upgrade the appeal of the car. Ooh, don't they look nice? Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Wish me luck. Well, so far they do pretty well. Uh, I got work to do. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm gonna go bed these brakes. See you guys in the morning. I'll let you know how it went. Uh, as long as I make it back to work. Well, it is the morning after and I can officially say I have done a thing. Uh, power stop brake upgrade. Slotted cross-drilled rotors all four corners. Uh, beautiful red powder coated brakes. Uh, my bedding process went fine last night and I didn't slide off the road, didn't crash the car, so that was nice. Uh, drove it all the way home, drove it all the way back, and uh, put a few miles on it today and everything seems to be good. No, uh, no braking issues. A lot of times people will complain about when you go to a slotted and cross drilled rotor um, that you're losing braking surface because technically speaking, you know, the pad isn't touching quite as much of the rotor because of the missing surface area from the it's fine, it's not gonna affect you. The nice thing is the fact that it has the ability to uh, bleed off heat considerably better. Now, you're not gonna notice that in daily driving, but with the twisties and things that are coming up, I may notice it. Uh, plus, they do look a whole lot nicer. Gives it a really good look. Um, I'm very happy with how they look in the OZ wheels. There's certainly room to do a larger caliper and a larger rotor if I ever decided to do that, but eh, probably not. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for coming along, as always. Um, this will be the last video you guys see before we head south on the 2500-2500 road trip. As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, this is a car that we purchased specifically for the 2500-2500, which is $2,500 cars going 2,500 miles. Uh, we're headed from here in Columbus, Ohio, down to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee to Helen, Georgia. Helen, Georgia to Bradenton. We're gonna go to the Freedom Factory, and then we're gonna head up to Charleston, and then we're gonna head back up to Charlotte, and then we're gonna take the Devil's Whip, and we're gonna bring it all home. Ends up being just over 2,500 miles. Um, it's gonna be a great time. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, We've done a couple of these. This will be our third one we've done over the last four years. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun. We're taking a couple of friends with us and uh, we're all gonna have a good time. We'll bring you guys along. And uh, hopefully you guys are gonna follow along with us. It's, it's a pretty exper fun experience. Now I also do wanna say, uh, this is something that's not like an open invitation situation. This is not something that's uh, you know a, a official thing. This is just kind of something that I decided that I wanted to do a couple of years ago and I had two friends that at the time decided that they were dumb enough to do it as well uh, and they came along and then uh, the second one uh, one of the guys that's coming along on this one Phil uh, came along as well and he brought his Pontiac 5 GT so there's nothing that says you guys can't do your own you know cheap car challenge road trip thing um, it's a fun experience uh, it, it gets you out there on the open road experiencing Americana 
and uh, it's not crazy crazy expensive like a lot of road rallies and a lot of the really expensive stuff that you do is but uh, anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this we'll see you on the next one I will see you probably from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I've got some uh, video already edited and uploaded, so if I miss out on getting any editing done on the road, you'll see other stuff. But otherwise, we'll see you on the 2500, 2500 road trip here very shortly. Also, you can follow along on the uh, daily updates on Instagram at 2500, 2500 road trip, if you're an Instagram kind of, kind of person. So anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.